Yeah, I was burning it back on the surface. Feel how strong they are? Bro. Yeah. It's different from what I normally do and what I normally tell you guys to do. Very unusual, but it worked. Oh, look how red he is. Oh, that thing's beautiful. Keep that rod tight, just like that. Reel into it, reel into it, reel tight. There you go. You got to keep that line tight. Come on, bro. Look at that. Woo! Got it, Rob? Yeah. Full tail. Yeah. I noticed that. Pretty fish. Feel how strong they are? I don't bro. Yeah. I think he's done yet. Yeah. It doesn't seem like it. Yeah. Crank him down. All he right. looks like he's he's running out of gas. There you go. Just keep that rod tight. Oh, there he goes. Come on, baby. Come on. All you gotta do is point his head towards me. Yeah. That thing popped right out, right? Bro. Oh no, it's in there. Oh, nice, job, oh, nice broad. Yeah, nice little summit. Look at the, that fish is gorgeous. Oh, it's got bro. an adipose fin too. See the little fin on the back? So, so that means it was stopped. born in the water. No shit. Yeah, that yeah, was born here. Yeah, he was Look at that. came right out of the truckie. Mm -hmm. Come there, baby. Look at the tail on that thing all spotted yeah. up. Oh! Set him in the water and it's starting to get white too. <laughs> there he goes. He hit the gas. Yeah. <laughs> Right on, brother. That's what it's all oh, about. It's My all heart's about. pounding like yeah. this. Junky bro. Yeah, yo, we can do, uh, make a new trip to the lumpy wall. Oh, yeah. I know my spots there, bro. Right on. I think it's hot, hot. It's so fun. Yeah. It's so fun. That's one. See any flash yet? Yeah, he's right here, right up the edge. Oh, okay. No, he's not. Not anymore. Look at him, the head shakes. Oh, that's a nice one. Okay, I saw a, a brief oh, flash. Rolling. All right. Let him run. Just let him go. Which one did you get it on? Oh, uh, the yellow and white, I believe. Oh, just regular yellow and white? Yeah. Hell yeah, bro. Yeah, don't chase him down the beach. Just, just keep the tension on him. Get that rod tip down a little bit. Oh yeah, that's a nice one, bro. Scary, dude. Yeah. I don't want Hang on, you'll be all right. You'll be all right. You be okay. That might be about an eight pounder, bro. Let's go. Man, he ain't ready yet. Oh, he's right there. Nice, bro. Hell yeah, bro. Thank you so much, sir. Hell yeah. That's probably about an eight pounder, dude. Oh, it might be. Yeah, I'm gonna say eight or nine. Nice. All right, you can release him. He gone. Yep. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, I was burning it back on the surface. Yeah, keep Mark away from me. <laughs> here, here I come, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're cold. 
you bring it. Oh, it's a seven. Yeah, it's I can't even red. see it. No, I saw the red. Oh, yep. Yeah. Oh, he's decent size. Nice one. Good one. Seven pounder. Yeah. Maybe eight. Oh, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Seven and a quarter. Oh, that's turned into a ten. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you're fifteen. You want me to grab him? No. no, no. no. <laughs> hey, Mark, here, grab this. Yeah. <laughs> that fish has got a wide head. Yeah. He must work out. <laughs> Oh yeah, look at the mouth on that thing. Oh, that's a ten. Oh yeah, that might be a double. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Oh, that's, he's a fucking 12, 13 yeah, pounder. Yeah, he's a big one. Yeah, he's, he's fucking... Yeah, you want me to lift higher? Nah, he's just gripped onto it. Like, flick his... You know how much this, uh, wet wings? Where's your scale at, bro? Yeah, I'll get it. <laughs> Grabbed him wrong. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> one, dude. Fuck yeah. That's a beast cool. right there. Yeah, let me get underwater. You deserve all of that thing. Look at that. Thanks, buddy. Nice one. Woo! Nice. Right Give on. me some. Right on, brother. Yeah. Right Give me some. Good job. The captain. Thanks, brother. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> Holy popcorn. All right, ladies and gents, I want to take a quick break from the video to show you what's going on out there. And on this one, we have a lot to cover. <laughs> uh, we'll start with the rod I'm using out there. Uh, this is an Akuma Salilo 9'6 light rod. Uh, this is designed for uh, uh, steelhead and salmon. Uh, that's why it has a light name. It's not an ultralight, uh, but it's a heavier rod. But uh, when you're considering fishing for steelhead salmon or these big Lahatans, uh, it's a lighter version of a heavier rod. Uh, it's nine foot six in length. Uh, it's kind of a moderate action rod. It's obviously it's got a lot of backbone, so we've got to handle some bigger fish. Uh, but it's got a real soft, whippy tip, so I, I really like using it to work back these uh, eighth ounce super tubes. I've it paired with a Shimano Vanquish 2500. Uh, really great reel, uh, really expensive reel, uh, and you can you can get by with other 2500 series uh, spinning reels. They'll definitely get the job done. Uh, this one's just got a five to one retrieve, which is great. Uh, uh, and, and I really, really like the Vanquishes. So uh, that's why I opted to go with this one. Um, I have it spooled with uh, Daiwa J-Braid 8X in 10 pound. And I run that up to a uh, 10 pound Runkel fluoro fluoro carbon leader. Uh, and then my leader length changes when I'm up at, uh, up at Pyramid. Um, back home, I usually run about a five foot leader. Uh, but Pyramid, these cutthroats tend to, uh, they're obviously very strong and they also tend to roll a lot when you have them hooked up. So I use uh, a leader the length of the rod. So this is a nine foot six rod. I use a nine foot six leader. This gives me a lot more uh, shock absorption. Uh, even though uh, fluorocarbon doesn't have as much stretch as mono, it still has a little bit. The fluorocarbon gives it a little bit of give uh, so they can do their rolls and do all those things without uh, me breaking off all the time. All right now let's uh, go to the bench and I'll show you the baits and the, uh, the, the jig heads and all those things and, and how I'm working them. All right guys here's uh, the baits we are using out here and, and some of the lead heads. I'll, I'll start with the lead heads. Um, we have three different sizes I typically use and uh, we'll start with the smallest. This is the most typical. It's the 1 8 um, and this to me acts most like a, a 30 second ounce uh, mini jig back here at home. Uh, you fish it very slow Typically, uh, real light bounces just like you're fishing a 32nd ounce mini jig. This is a 3 16th, which is just a hair bigger. Um, and this, this is the quarter. The quarter, you're not going to use too much unless you're out in a boat, maybe vertical jigging. Uh, it, 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 I, in my opinion, it sinks a little bit too fast uh, to use from shore and you don't get the right action out of it. Uh, the 3 16 I've used in different uh, occasions, like uh, last video I was out there, they wanted it on the bottom and I was using the 3 16ths to work it on the bottom. Now, today, it was very interesting on this, this video, um, I was using this 3 16 uh, when I was burning the baits back. Um, it gave it the right amount of swim. It would, it would dart side to side, almost like a glide bait. Uh, the 1 8 and the 1 quarter did not give it the same action, in my opinion, so I stuck with the 3 16 
and that's what paid off. So uh, it's always good to have several different uh, uh, jig head uh, weight options uh, because they, they make the bait do uh, different things on the retrieve. Uh, regardless of how you're working it, uh, this extra weight or lighter weight is going to affect how the jig swims. Now the baits that were working up there uh, real well, like as usual, Gold Member is one of the, the really good baits up there. Um, but this trip, uh, we, we uh, got into them on uh, yellow and white, which is just standard. We call it mac and cheese sometimes. Uh, but it's uh, if you go on the GSF website, it's yellow and white. Uh, this one got them interested. And uh, the biggest one, for whatever reason, Bullfrog was really hot because this is the one I was burning back and was getting them on the fast retrieve. Um, with that 3 16 Now, I don't know if it was because of the colors of Bullfrog that they were hitting it or just because of the speed. I did try other colors thinking like, okay, if they like Bullfrog, they're really going to love Goldmember burn back. Uh, but uh, I didn't get any bites on that one. I just get bit on Bullfrog. Uh, so was it just opportunity just happened? The fish happened to be in front of this one when I was throwing it and not in front of that one? Or was it really this color? moving fast that really excited them. I don't know. Now I'll show you real quick how we put these uh, these lead heads inside these jigs and it's very easy. Um, these jigs have a slit all the way down the middle so this, this tail really has a lot of action in the water. So what you do is you slide it in with the eye up. You get the eye inside this slit here. Well, if I can find it. Right like this and delicately slide it up. Now these tubes are very big, so it's even easier to put them in these tubes than it is to put it in the mini jigs. You just push it up and push the eyelet through, right like that, so your hook's sticking out like that. And that's all you gotta do, and then you know work it back and it slims real good. Uh, when you're uh, on the burn and really burning it back, this thing darts side to side like that. It's, it's got really awesome action, and I can, I can see why the, uh, the trout just couldn't resist it. All right, now I had a uh, underwater camera out there and I uh, got some really, really interesting footage. So let's take a look at that. As you can see here, I'm uh, throwing the camera on out. Just let it settle on the bottom here. See what we see. All right. There's a bunch of Lahatans cruising by. Um, this was all filmed at uh, Pelican Beach. It's uh, right to the uh, left of the launch ramp. If you're looking right at the launch ramp, more the beach area. If you go to the right, there's a lot of rocks. And here's another good, looks like a summit. And here's another one. Another thing I noticed uh, with this footage and footage in the past, there's a couple more out there. Um, they seem to travel in groups of two. Um, unless they're in a big school, but uh, you see lots of packs of two and once once in a while you'll see a third trailer But most of the time they're in groups of two. And here's another one. Looks like he's curious about the camera. That yeah, looked like a summit There's a couple more off in the distance Can't really tell what they are look like summits. Maybe Another one right in front of the camera there nice size one There's one coming right at us. Another one that, oh, see, they're packs of two, and there's a third, the third trailer. Uh, I don't know why they do that, but that seems to be common the more uh, footage I get. There's one. And I don't see a second, just see the one. Here comes another one. Oh, and there's two. There's two together. And one thing you notice, they're all on the bottom. Uh, I've noticed that from the other footage I've gotten from other trips. They all seem to be cruising the bottom. And then there's one, two off in the distance. Oh, here comes a third. Good size one. That looked like a summit to me. And another one. That one could be a pilot, I'm not sure. But again, pack of two and there's a third trailer. Oh, here's another one. So you got four. Don't see that too often. But either way, uh, there is a lot of fish in the water up here. All right, now I noticed something very interesting when I was re reviewing all that underwater footage. 
And uh, at the lake, there's two strains of cutthroat trout, if you didn't know. There's the pilot peaks and the summits. And uh, they, they have very subtle differences, but they are different. Um, it, I'll show you this picture. And in the picture, on the top one, I believe, is a pilot. And the bottom fish is the summit. And the summits have more of a uh, sharper beak. They're kind of shaped more like torpedoes and uh, tend to have uh, brighter colors where the, uh, the uh, pilot peaks uh, have more subdued colors, a little, little bit more silvery looking, and they have kind of a rounded nose, especially when they get, uh, get bigger. And, and from what I understand, the pilot peaks are the ones that get really big. The summits get big, but not as big as the pilots. Uh, those are the ones that get to, to real monster size. Now, years and years ago, uh, the, the Paiute people uh, lost uh, control of some of their land in the lake. Uh, they lost some of the water rights and the, the trout went almost or all but extinct in the lake. And eventually they were able to get them back, uh, back in there and uh, they started a hatchery program. But their hatchery program uh, isn't like a hatchery program out here. What they, what they do is they still allow the fish to spawn, but they, they made certain intakes, they modified. So when the, when the trout go up to spawn, they can trap them and then they sort them into males and females. And then what they'll do is they'll hand milk them. So they'll get the eggs out and the sperm out and mix them up and then send them to the hatchery, which is on site. And then they uh, produce the uh, the fry or these these very small Lahatans. And uh, then they put them back in the lake. But before they do that, they tag them in the nose and then they clip their adipose fin. And the adipose fin is the fin uh, that's right before the tail. It's a little tiny fin on their spine uh, but I guess, because uh, trout, from what I understand, can grow back uh, most of their fins except for that one. So what they do is they clip that one on the hatchery fish, or quote, hatchery fish, uh, even though they're, they're basically spawned in the, in, in the system, they're a pyramid, uh, because the other fish can go up the natural intakes, like the truckee, and spawn uh, naturally and those fish when they grow up have an adipose and this is how they keep track and tell them apart and uh, uh, I'm sure there's a there's a lot of uh, uh, biologists that are involved in all this uh, but uh, but that's basically how they how they do it and how they identify the different ones so then I started thinking back to the trip right before this one's about two weeks before this one uh, and the fishing was very slow uh, but the last day we got into them when we caught probably eight between the three of us and I was looking back at the pictures and all but one were summits with an adipose fin. Uh, very interesting. Then I go back and look at this, this current footage and you can see, you know, summit, adipose, summit, adipose, another summit, adipose. So uh, something's up. I, I don't know what it is, uh, uh, but the, the, it seems like the, the fish that are, I guess, uh, you'd call them wild, were, were, you know, basically spawned in the truckee. Uh, and the summits, because the, uh, the pilots can spawn as well in the truckee, um, have their act together as far as the, they seem to be getting on the spawn mode. They're, they're in close, they aren't feeding right now, uh, but they're, they're in close in numbers. Uh, but where are all the hatchery raised fish, or, or you know, air quotes, hatchery raised fish that have their adipose clipped? And where are most of the pilots? Because um, uh, there's hundreds of thousands if not millions of fish in there where are they what are they doing uh, and why are these these wild summits uh, the only ones that seem to be up close and uh, sometimes willing to take a take a bite at a bait uh, very very interesting uh, and I don't know if that has something to do with why it's been so slow uh, we talked to one guide up there and he said uh, back when we were up there and they had that huge winter storm uh, that put a lot of really cold runoff into the lake, dropped the water temperature down around 41 degrees, and basically set uh, the trout spawn clock back. Except for some of these summits with the adipose, I guess. Uh, but I thought that was very, very interesting. So take take that as you will. Um, uh, maybe if uh, one of you is a biologist or knows something about it, please leave a comment and let me know what you think. Uh, but I just found that very, very interesting. All right, just want to take a quick second to show you uh, the technique I was using out there because it's different from what I normally do and what I normally tell you guys to do. Very unusual, but it worked. Um, so typically what, what we want to do is, is throw it out, let it sink a little bit, and do a very, very slow retrieve with very light bounces. So that jig is just slightly bouncing through the water column, 
uh, and looks like a, a, a fish just going about his business and once in a while give it a pause or something like that, see if it deviates or whatever, maybe you'll get hit, right? As you can see in this footage, the, the baits are just cruising right through the water um, real real slow. Uh, and in fact, in, in this, this clip, you can see under there, there's uh, I'm working it right on the bottom, which was working the last time we were there. They wanted it like scooting through the sand. Uh, this time, completely different. What really seemed to get them excited was burning the jig back. And uh, that's completely counterintuitive to everything I do and everything I always say, because uh, typically whether you're fishing here or fishing up there, they want it slow and methodical, maybe a pause here and there, but they want it slow. Uh, not right now, apparently. Uh, and I can't explain why other than maybe they're not hungry and maybe when you, when you crank it back real fast, uh, it activates their prey drive and they can't help but take a swipe at it. That's the only thing I can figure, but it was working. So what I was doing was casting out and I wasn't even letting it sink, using a 3 16th like I explained earlier because it swims the best and going like this fast and pause, this fast and pause. And I'll show you in this clip, you can see me crank, 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 pause, crank, 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 pause. And right about here, you see I hook up. Now, uh, What's, what's interesting about that is, is that that never works for trout, uh, except in very rare circumstances. So I don't want you to go out and start fishing that way on purpose. Um, but right now in that situation, at that time, it seemed to work. So just uh, be open to things, try new things, especially when the fish aren't biting and you know they're around. And uh, sometimes something might work out and, and by luck, I mean, I've tried that technique bunches of times up there and it never worked until this trip and uh, unfortunately I didn't figure out to the end of the trip uh, so we weren't picking up fish the whole time like if we were at Pelican uh, with all those fish around uh, might have been a much different story uh, but I wasn't doing it then I didn't think about it then uh, I thought about it a different time uh, and we got on the fish we got on but it's still a really good discovery and uh, uh, something you should always keep in the back of your mind uh, when you're fishing at any lake uh, sometimes do the complete opposite of what normally works and maybe you'll catch some fish. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I love that mid combo, baby. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's so hard to tell. Usually with the bigger rods, we can tell by the rod bend, but since that's an ultralight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, a decent one. Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't know, dude. Might That's be. Nice one. I don't know, bro. Might might be in that uh, that wheelhouse right there. Yeah. He's pretty. He's pretty pretty long. Oh yeah. Might have to get the scale out just to see. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Pop right <laughs> off. <laughs> oh, he's, he's not as big. Him just a little fella. Yep. I think we figured him out. Is that, a, is that a quick grind also? Not as quick, but on the top. I had my rod tip up and I was popping it as close to the surface as possible. Trying to trying to silhouette it with the sunset, you know? Yeah. Look at that. Ah 
Yeah. There he goes. Redemption. Yeah. Redemption. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the pink on him. Beautiful. I get it in some colors. He's got, he's he's got full white bra. tips on right the fins. Face. His fins are white tipped at the bottom. That thing is gorgeous. Yeah. Hold on for your camera. There we go. Good colors on yeah. that fish. Thanks, boys. Yeah. I got you, bro. That looks like a big one. It's a good one. Hmm. Here. Give me that shit. <laughs> you burning it? No, I was actually fucking actually working it. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Yeah, it looked like it might be double dig from a distance. No, he's not. He's no? Like oh, okay. Pretty though. Yeah. Quite What'd you get it on? Uh, the green pumpkin. Hey, Hector, he's got your... Oh, look how red he is. Oh, that thing's beautiful. Nice. Nice. Mr. Stain the rest of the day. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. That way you can see his tail. Got it. Okay. Nice Hold on, wait, 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 let me get it in the water. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't go out there too far. <laughs> oh, almost got <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, ladies and gents, there you have it. Uh, uh, good times up there. Uh, I was very fortunate, even though the fishing wasn't great, as with a great group of guys, we, we actually had a blast just, uh, you know, smoking and joking, as they say, the whole time and uh, trying to get on fish, and, and every now and then we did. But the, uh, the, the biggest thing was, uh, well, one, the, the, the thing I was talking about with the summits and the adipose and why they're up close and the, you don't see a lot of the pilots. Um, uh, it's a mystery, you know, but uh, uh, maybe there's somebody that knows and uh, will see this video and let us know what's going on. <laughs> uh, and the other thing was, was, who would have thought burning baits back for trout would work? Uh, but it did. As long as you had that 3 16th uh, lead head in there, uh, it darted around like a, like a, um, a glide bait and uh, they just seem to love it if they're in the area. And the other thing, I'll show you this clip, uh, like I was showing you earlier at the uh, underwater clip, like they, they travel in twos. More than once, uh, you can see me, I hook up and then I lost one and then Hector's right next to me, he hooked up near at the same time. So that shows you there was at least two fish right in that area when we were working those baits back and he was burning his back as well and uh, we both got bit. Um, probably not because they're hungry, but just because it's, it's that prey drive and uh, these guys are, are apex predators as far as trout are concerned and they just couldn't take it and had to smash it, you know. So uh, uh, very interesting thing, good thing to keep in the back of your mind, your back pocket. Uh, another tool for the toolbox, as I always say, uh, and try everything until you get them fish. Now, if you want any of the uh, fine products I use on this channel, like the Super Tubes, any of the mini jigs that Golden State makes, the, the Waterland sunglasses that are just awesome and I wear all the time, and the uh, Katana rods, uh, there's a QR code right up here. If you click on that, it'll take you to a link tree, which will take you to all those sites. If uh, you buy anything from Golden State Fishing Custom Baits, if you type in code CSPANKER at checkout, you get 10% off. And with the uh, Waterland sunglasses, if you click on the QR code and, and follow the hyperlink in that link tree, if you purchase anything, you will automatically get 15% off anything you purchase. And the uh, Katana Rods, uh, they are available on Instagram. Uh, if you want information about them, either at uh, Katana Rods 2022 or Golden State Fishing Custom Baits, I believe it's GSF Custom Baits on Instagram. Uh, they are going to be available very soon, if not this next week or this week when this video comes out or the week after. It's, it's very close, so uh, just hold on. They're coming, I promise. <laughs> so as always, uh, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Really helps me and helps the channel out because uh, uh, all this, uh, putting all this together uh, isn't easy. It's a lot of work, I enjoy it, but uh, 
Uh, anything you do on the free side would be very helpful to me <laughs> in the channel. Um, if you uh, have any questions for me, uh, please leave questions and comments here on the channel or go to my uh, Instagram at cspanker outdoors. And uh, with that, I hope to see you out there in uh, tight lines. Thank you.